welcome everybody. Thank you, Jason. Jason's going to record it so that you'll all be sent a link of the recording after this session. So don't worry about making too many notes or anything. Enjoy the webinars and our guest speakers and uh, their experiences because you will get the link where you can watch back at your leisure. Um, so firstly, welcome everybody. Um, this is our In Memory event webinar and we're delighted to be joined by Katie from Wiltshire Air Ambulance along with Beth and Amy from East Cheshire Hospice and they're all going to share their experiences of running In Memory events. So for those that don't know me, I'm Jackie from Much Loved. I'm one of the account managers and I'm joined today by my colleagues Jane and Jason. Jason kindly is also going to have a look at this chat box and answer any questions as we go along, but there will be plenty of time for questions after each charity presentation. Um, yeah, so with that, if we go on to the next slide, and I'm going to introduce Katie for you. So, so Katie Burke from Wiltshire Air Ambulance, um, is going to share their steps to remember and in celebration of life service. The celebration of life service is a relationship cultivation event. So I'm going to hand over to Katie and let her explain all about it. Thank you, Jason. Next thank slide. you very much. And thank you to everyone at Much Love for having me this morning. Um, I've worked at a few different charities over my 13 year charity experience. And I've always loved and found in them the most amazing and rewarding income stream to work on. I've always found it an absolute honour to support our special supporters. Um, and I'm very passionate about helping them and giving the best support care and best experience um, on their stewardship, but also by setting up these wonderful events. Um, obviously, an air ambulance, traditionally, we try not to be an end of life uh, charity, but unfortunately, of, of course, we do have an end of life uh, part, of, part of it. Um, so when I came to the charity two and a half years ago, I wanted to honour and remember patients that we haven't been able to save, but also honour and remember our supporters that have loved us during their lifetime. So we created the In Celebration of Life service. Um, this was sort of something that I'd looked at from hospices, um, having worked in the hospice sector beforehand. And so I tried to adapt it to work in the air ambulance field. Um, so let's look at the slides I've created. Um, who did we invite? Basically, we invited the supporters that had donated over 50 pounds to us uh, in memory over the last five years. And we decided on the £50 because we thought that would capture the, the people that were more, in much love terms, tribute guardians, next of kins, etc., rather than people that were donating sort of £10 to funeral collections, etc. Uh, we thought that they were the more important people to try to get to come to this type of event. Um, we wrote to 688 individuals in all. Uh, we wrote and posted. Um, we shared on our platforms, we shared on Facebook and Instagram, um, LinkedIn, really trying to make sure that everybody um, that supports us was able to attend if they chose to. Um, we included it in our newsletter. The event is at the end of November, so from the start of September, it was in every newsletter that we did. Um, and of course, we talked to our supporters so the community team, the corporate guys, the event guys all knew about the event and basically whoever we were talking to, it got mentioned as a just in case because you never know what in memory nuggets there are. Quite often we find that community events are being put on in memory of somebody, but they've never mentioned it. So we always try to mention these events. And I think it's really important to mention that it's also a free of charge event. There is no charge to come to this. We didn't want anything to stop people being able to come and remember and join together. Uh, next slide, please. So the event itself on the day, it starts at four o'clock. It's a non-religious service. And on arrival, we have uh, the Decibels, who are local wedding singers, uh, singing for us. So there's quite a lovely atmosphere on arrival. Um, we have 
a welcome from a local celebrant. We try to keep everything local so everybody uh, feels part of the community. Um, and then we move on to having readings from a crew member, a patient family member, and a volunteer. Last year, we had an extra one. Um, we had somebody from the charity as well. Um, and all are bereaved, so everybody is in the same boat as such. So there is an instant connection. Um, after that, there is a moment of reflection where people are invited to come up to our uh, Christmas tree and hang an ornament on that they have purchased at the start, and they get the opportunity to write a message to their loved one. It's a really lovely moment, really thought provoking. It is really emotional. People do get upset, um, but being all together, everyone's given that opportunity and it's not awkward or unusual in any way. It's just a really lovely moment. Then once that's done, everybody takes a seat. We have a one minute silence and the celebrant closes and the decibels will sing in again. And then everybody is invited to stay for mulled wine, mince pies, cup of tea, whatever we've got that they can have. Um, it's really so everybody can either spend time together as a family, if they've come as a family, or we've found that people turn around and start talking to each other and sharing their own experiences, which is incredibly helpful to bereave grieving uh, supporters. Uh, so it's really a lovely event. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so the objectives, obviously, as a charity, we all need to keep in mind what, what do we want out of it. Um, as I said, it's not a money making. The only thing that makes money as such is our ornaments, but that really just helps to um, pay for the mince pies, the mulled wine. I should mention that the venue is free of charge, the celebrant services are free of charge, the singers are free of charge, everyone does everything for us um, as a gift in kind. Um, so it's really what I would suggest is look at what you've got, look at what Sanji knows, work with your corporate teams, with your community teams, and, and see what you can utilise free of charge really. Um, as I say, we do charge for the ornaments, that's really to cover the cost of their printing and for the teas and coffees at the end. Um, so the objectives are simply to strengthen the relationships and supporters with our supporters and to provide any additional level of support to our bereaved patients or even sometimes our patients um, attend. Um, when we go on a mission previously, it used to end at the mission. We're trying to find a way to support the families further. We don't want it to end. We want it to continue so they, they don't feel left out in the cold as such. So it's something we're trying to really work on. Um, so we're hoping these sorts of events help with that. Um, initially, it was really to help with the internal team in, uh, to understand the importance of working with our bereaved supporters and patients. Um, at first, they didn't really understand the point of it, but having attended this event, they understand that actually it's a really positive experience and really helps the supporters and the patient families. Um, success was measured on numbers attended. I get that for many of the, you, these numbers won't be huge, but we were expecting sort of 20 and so to get 42 at our first one, first one and then uh, into the 40s again, I can't see the slide number, sorry, because the window's in the way. Um, into the 40s on the second one, we're really pleased with. We do, of course, hope that it will grow, but equally we have decided that we wouldn't let it go over 60 because it is such an intimate event that if we felt like it was going over 60, we would perhaps run them around the county at different venues um, to keep that intimacy. Um, success was also measured by the conversations we've had. We have pe we've had people go off and do their own independent fundraising. We've had people pledge gifts in wills, which of course is an ultimate gift. And just the general positive feedback. We've had letters and cards handwritten to us post event. So um, we see that all as incredibly positive. Uh, next slide, please. Um, off the back of our in celebration event, 
we realized that it was quite a solemn affair. It was meant to be, it's meant to be thought provoking, but it meant that it wasn't really family friendly. It was more adult based. So we wanted to be able to get families involved all together. We wanted it to be a sort of a fun element to the in memory because everybody has fond memories of their loved ones. and They want to you know, have energy when they're remembering them. So we looked around to see what there was out there and kind of on the race to life vibes, we've decided to do a Steps to Remember, um, which is a four mile walk, starts and ends at our base. And the four miles represents the four million that we require to raise each year. <coughs> um, and it starts at 4.30 because then by the time everyone's back, the sun is setting. So we're having that thought provoking moment at that moment. We've made sure that Everybody can be included, so we made sure that despite being alongside a canal, that it is accessible for pushchairs and scooters, uh, bikes, all of that kind of thing to make sure that everybody can be included. Um, the only thing I would say is at one point it does narrow, so the wider scooters it is slightly more complicated for, but we didn't have any problems last year and we did have a lovely lady who was in her 90s who managed to complete the four mile loop. Um, along with one of our other fundraising managers who, who stayed talking to her, which was just lovely as well. Um, at the end, when everybody arrives, again, the decibels are there, welcoming them back with beautiful songs as the sun's setting. Uh, they are given the opportunity to write on bunting. We've got a helicopter sculpture at the front that everybody then hung their memory to their loved one on. Um, and then they were invited to stay for tea and coffee and cake. Uh, the kids were running around with the dogs. Uh, so it really was a beautiful family affair. Um, and actually people stay for quite a long time and it really was heartwarming to see everybody sharing their experiences. Um, this one is um, a bit of a fundraising event. There are the costs that are on the screen involved, and we do ask for a suggested sponsorship. It's not a must have, it is a suggested. Some people absolutely smashed that target, some people didn't, so it all kind of balanced out in the end, um, and it made uh, just over £1,400, um, which, was, which was great. Again, I appreciate uh, that's not huge to some people, but certainly for our first event, we were really, really pleased and didn't expect anywhere near that. Uh, next slide, please, Jason. Um, again, so let's go through who was invited. So we cut it down to three years rather than five years, as we had done with the In Celebration Life Service, because we just noticed that people that had donated four and five years ago weren't really responding to us. So we didn't want to waste their time or our resources. Uh, we wrote to them if we had emails, we did use email in this in this case, we shared on our social medias, we uh, added to our newsletters and again, we talked to all our supporters. Um, I think going forward, we might utilise our radio channels and things uh, next time, but actually we still got a, re a reasonable number. The objectives, again, to strengthen the relationships. Uh, to ensure that, that there were no bars, to make sure that the whole family could be included, um, and of course to raise income for the charity. Um, we had 49 participants this time and we had some amazing conversations and actually off the back of this event we've had a team of 20 go off and do lots of some other amazing event challenges. So it just shows that if you if you're willing to spend time with the supporters at these events, huge things can grow from it. Next slide, please. So that's my two events in a really rough nutshell. Um, I wanted to give you a quick overview um, of my key points. What I would say is put yourself in the shoes of your supporter where you can. I know it's not easy, but I think uh, in memory events really are more about the supporter and what they need and their loved one rather than about the charity as such. Um, so try to, try to think of it everything as a supporter. Don't always do events for money. Uh, do it for the supporter, do it for cultivation, do it for those conversations, do it to support them. Because you've got to remember that these guys are four times more likely to leave a gift and a will uh, 
and every charity's ultimate gain is to get one of those so if you cultivate them and treat them well now hopefully they'll remember you in the long run uh do things to get internal buy-in uh, you might have to push but do it it is worth it it might take time it might take a couple of presentations but it really is worth it um as i said earlier Events don't have to cost you the earth. Have a look what's under your nose, see what you've got, see what you can use, see what you can beg, borrow and steal. Um, both of my events don't really cost a huge amount at all. A little bit of printing for the ornaments and it was a little bit of cake at the steps to remember. And who doesn't love spending money on a little bit of cake? Um, that's never going to be a bad thing. And the last one I would say is be kind to yourself. These events can take their toll they are quite heavy you do have some really deep conversations with your supporters on the lead up to and also on the day and if you're putting yourselves in their shoes as such it can weigh heavy so give yourself a break eat a little bit of cake and uh, give yourself that moment and that's it from me thank you oh that's oh, wow, brilliant Thank you, Katie. That's really is lovely. Um, we have got a couple of questions that have just come in for you, Katie, if that's OK. So um, we've got, can you hear me OK? It's, we've got one from Stuart. Um, so he wants to know, do you monitor where any donations may come from post event to be able to soft credit it to that event? So are there other KPIs for this event? the event besides awareness and support so i'm guessing stuart meant for that first um celebration of life event katie so we try to if we can if it if we know that they've attended and they donate within a couple of days of the event we will soft credit it but if there is no clear connection then it's kind of sticking your finger in the end we just have to put it down to that donor um Obviously, if you've got a great relationship with them, you can ask them. Um, a lot of our in-memory supporters I've got a great relationship with, so I could easily pick up the phone or drop them an email and ask them if it's in connection with that. And I think that's quite an important thing to have. Um, there was no financial KPI around uh, in celebration of life. Um, so we, we didn't have it. And I don't think we ever would, if I'm honest, because that's just not the point of that service if that makes sense okay and julie um has asked and i think she's saying they've had trouble getting sign-ups for walking events so what did you find was the best way to promote sign-ups for your um step out step event? steps to remember um mm -hmm. it really was going to those supporters that have donated in mem over a certain amount even 50 pound is quite low i think the the real core what i call the hardcore supporters that actually attended were higher donors if i'm honest but equally we did have some that hadn't donated at all that had seen it on our social media channels as well so i think don't give up on anything. Yeah, it is really hard. And what I found is actually people sign up quite last minute. So we were tempted at one point to cancel steps to remember because we hadn't had a huge amount of sign up, but we held in strong and people did come in. I think people wait to see what the weather's going to be like, especially if there isn't a huge fundraising ask around it. Um, so don't give up and use every channel you've got. Write to people, email people, phone people. If you've got those connections, pick up the phone and actually say to them, we're having this event. I think it's got your name all over it. Come along. We'd love to see you there. I don't think anything can really beat that. Uh, use your social medias. If you've got links with radio stations, use the radio stations. Really just get it out everywhere. Brilliant. You've got lots of huge thank yous, Katie. We've got a couple of questions around GDPR. Um, so how not my favourite subject. Uh, no, <laughs> is it any of our favourites? Well, um, folks, so should, we, should we save them to the end? I'm just thinking of timing for um, okay. Beth and Amy, okay. so we can come back yeah. to those if, at the end if that's all right. Okay, that's great. So on that note, then we will go over to East Cheshire Hospice, where we're going to um, have a little presentation from Beth and Amy um, about their um, events. So over to you two guys. 
Um, hi, so I'm um, Beth. I'm the individual giving manager at the hospice. Um, so I've been at East Chester Hospice about uh, four and a half years. Um, so I started in the community team, moved over to individual giving about three years ago. Um, this last year, we've really pushed a focus on um, in memory giving, um, which is where Amy comes into play. So Amy, what's your, your role? Yeah, so hi, I'm Amy. Um, I started at the hospice in September after 20 years as a secondary school teacher. So this is my first uh, flurry into fundraising. Um, I'm the in-memory giving assistant here at the hospice, but my role is quite an interesting one in, in that it's slightly hybrid. Uh, I spend a day uh, on the clinical side here at the hospice. So I spend the morning in our daycare centre uh, on a Tuesday, uh, speaking to patients, meeting them as they arrive with their families. I run a little activity, still a teacher in me. And then in the afternoon, I spend time on the ward, again, with patients, talking to them bedside, if it's appropriate, doing another activity, and also speaking to their families and making cups of tea to kind of get to know them um, on their journey here at the hospice. Um, yeah, so next slide, please. Um, thank you. Um, so basically, we run a, a Starlight Walk, a sort of memory walk. It's our flagship event every year. Um, we've run it for many, many, many years now. Um, up until 2017, it was called the Starlight Walk. Um, in 2018, we rebranded because we got lower numbers in 2017. So we rebranded to see if that would help. Um, and we did a couple of years of um, different branding. Uh, but this year, uh, we went right back to Starlight Walk and um, right back to the roots because people kept saying, when, when's your Starlight Walk? But well, actually, we just rebranded it as the same walk. So we've gone back to the original branding um, and we've just had it. So it was on the 27th of April, um, so about a month ago now. Um, and uh, yeah, so the event consists of a two and a half uh, kilometre loop um, around a local stately home. Uh, so you sort of walk through the grounds and then come back um, through. Uh, we've got like an event village where we have like stalls and like a screen um, and like a DJ and that kind of thing. Uh, it starts at 7 p.m. Um, with the idea that people will set off, do a few loops, and then by the time they've done a few, it the sun would have set and then it's a lovely sort of dusky um, backdrop and then it goes into sort of night and it becomes the starlight side of it. Um, so we do like an introduction from our nurse and our chaplain um, to sort of get everyone to off on the walk. Um, so the, in terms of the internal running of the event, so our events team do all the logistics and practicalities of the event. Um, and uh, myself and Amy had a big involvement this year on really pushing the memory side and making the sort of in memory offering really special um, for this year. So. Like I said, we've just had it in um, April, so this is all still quite sort of fresh in our brains. So we'll just sort of run through how we sort of did it this year and what we did differently to make it sort of special. Uh, so yeah, next slide, please. Uh, so if you we invite, um, first of all, because it was our mass participation event, we went all out with social media. Um, so we did social media um, everywhere, paid social ads. We put QR codes on posters everywhere. Uh, we did sort of local news, uh, local radio, roadside banners. Um, we rewrapped our hospice uh, charity shop van, sort of drives around to little furniture delivery. So that had a big um, sort of Starlet Walk branding on. Uh, we branded it early. Um, so basically it went out to everybody, went out on all our newsletters. Um, so yeah, so that was sort of the general side inviting anybody and everybody really that has a sort of um in walking in memory of a loved one not even necessarily related to the hospice um, it could be anyone that had someone to remember um, and we did a kind of more personalized um mailing so it wasn't a mass mailing it was a very kind of selective mailing and it was about 60 people that I personally wrote to who I've met on my journey so far because like I talked about earlier I have met families um obviously on the clinical side but obviously and when they were bereaving and, and I've recently lost a loved one and so I wrote to those 
people individually so where I could personalize the letter based on the relationships I've had either with themselves or with their loved one I could also mention any prior fundraising they've done in memory and specifically invite them to the um, event I also invited them slightly earlier so they could come to the event village slightly earlier and I would meet and greet them and that worked really well because then a small amount of people could come at a kind of slightly quieter time before the big event opened to like the general public um, and so we could just buy them a little coffee or a tea or a hot chocolate and had a chance to chat to them and reconnect and speak to them about their loved one and um, obviously we asked for people to participate in the walk what we did find is that some people came with their families who kind of waved them off and so they were able to spend time in the event village that was really nice so not everybody who necessarily signed up to the walk but had supporters who came with them to wave them off were also in the event village so I could um, chat to those as well kind of the wider family as well yeah next slide please Uh, so yeah, so these are um, just some pictures of the event so you can sort of have a look at what it's like. Um, so you can see in the bottom left, this is where we set everybody off. It was raining, fortunately, because obviously we're in the north. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can see sort of the stores behind what the event really set up was like. We sort of cheered everyone off at the same time. Um, and then naturally it sort of staggered itself around the roof with people stopping at certain sort of feature points and that kind of thing. Uh, so you can see the sort of people walking through like the Bluebell Woods, which was lovely. Um, and then as it got darker, as you can see, we did big lots of lighting um, to sort of, so you couldn't see this when people arrived, but by the time they'd sort of walked around a few times and it had become dark, all the trees all got lit up. So it felt like a different walk by a couple of loops round, which was really, um, people really enjoyed. Uh, these little candles on the top right, um, they were little jam jars we got donated. So we gave every family a jam jar with um, one of those little um, light tea lights in. And then we asked people to place them along the lake. Um, so the first loop, people started to place them. And then again, as it got dark, um, they were sort of scattered all the way around, um, which, yeah which was um, lovely. Again, just a nice little extra touch we did um, that people really enjoyed. Uh, so yeah, next slide, please. So yeah, so like I said earlier, we did do a very sort of in memory focused special touches. Um, we wanted to add a little extra to the event um, that was really sort of special for those that really wanted to remember people, but obviously didn't want to add lots of costs to the event um, by adding these extra special touches. Um, so we sort of put our heads together and thought about ways to um, sort of add an extra little um, memory side. Uh, so we are actually launching our memory tree. Um, it should be delivered today, actually. <laughs> um, so we basically used the event as a soft launch for that memory tree. Um, so what we did is we got a little stall in our um, event village um, and we had like a little fake um, temporary sort of light up tree. And um, what we did is we invited people to come over and write a little dedication on some seeded heart paper. Um, so as you can see in the middle picture, um, these were very kindly donated to us by a local um, funeral directors who we knew gave them out uh, um, to sort of bereaved families anyway. So we asked them and said, could we, could we have a few for this event? Um, and they very kindly um, said yes. Uh, so that was a lovely extra touch. So we obviously didn't have to um, sort of pay for them, which was really lovely. Uh, so people wrote their little message on there and pinned it on the little light up tree. And then because they're wildflowers, we are gonna plant all the ones we've got left at the hospice by where we're gonna put the um, real memory tree. Uh, so that was just a really nice extra touch and sort of brought it sort of all looped around. Uh, we had a lot of clinical involvement on the night as well, which was, um, really special like we normally have nurses that attend and sort of a volunteer basis but we really wanted to involve a lot of the clinical teams in the sort of planning of the event as well so for example it was our chaplain that helped us get the connection with the funeral directors um, which was um, very helpful and we had our bereavement team there so our child bereavement lead um, she stood by one of the bridges with little pebbles so she gave all the children, well, and adults, anyone who wanted one, like a little pebble to sort of throw over the bridge in memory of their loved one. Um, so again, that was just, we had the pebbles donated from a garden center, dead easy, a nice simple gesture, um, but was a nice talking point and got people sort of talking to Sue, our child bereavement lead, um, and lots of familiar faces 
for the people that attended as well. So it was really nice for them to have that full loop of maybe having care at the hospice and then seeing the familiar faces that sort of helped them through. Um, and I think that sort of added to the sort of fundraising element as well, essentially, because it sort of brings it all back around. Um, so yeah, we had um, the chaplaincy team there as well who helped us on our stall. Um, and we also had sort of signage all around the um, all around the route saying sort of ask about a memory tree in the event village. So we had lots of people that sort of came and asked about it when um, they were sort of walking around. So yeah, it was a really good opportunity for that. Yeah, um, I probably should have mentioned as well, we had some, we had a nursing room who was stationed on our stall initially as well, because one of the things that I thought was really important is that the clinical team gave us some recommendations of families I should personally invite as well, because that was really nice to get that clinical buy-in, and then they themselves were also attending the event, so it kind of, like Beth said, kind of continued that kind of ongoing care from the hospice as well and I attend the time to remember service that we have monthly here at the hospice where we invite families back approximately three months after they've lost a loved one and at that point I was also talking about Starlight Walk we had a pop-up banner behind reception about Starlight Walk and there was a little flyer inside there so even if they weren't personally invited they had kind of a drip feed of our event and could ask more questions to me at time to remember because I attend that too um, and obviously and then leading on for something else that we did during the walk and um, you can see the picture on the left hand side of the screen it's what is the old ice store at the um, stately home but what we did is we just kind of decorated as you can see it almost looks like a tunnel but we just decorated the um the bars and the grills inside with little fairy lights and tried to make a little kind of feature of that as a nice little stopping point it's halfway around the loop uh, and I stationed myself at that point once the walk had started and it was a really great opportunity to re-engage with families that I'd either just chatted to in the events village or hadn't got a chance to speak to but I know I invited them or met with them along their journey um, and they could take a picture down there because not only had we lit it up with the fairy lights just inside but behind you can see in the back uh, background we had all the trees lit up behind so it was a really beautiful spot for people to kind of stop have a chat to me take a photograph but also have a little bit of reflection and just underneath you can see um another um sign that we created which was right next to where i was sort of stationed but also along the route and uh, registration where people could scan the qr code and it take them through to a dedication page that i'd used uh, I created using the Much Love platform. So again, it's the free dedication pages that you get as part of your Much Love package. Um, and if they sort of scan the QR code, it took them straight through to the um, dedication page where they could post a photograph of the evening. It didn't have to be the one that they took there. It could be any of them. It could be a picture of the loved one they were walking in memory of, along with a little message and um, a little dedication to their loved one. And if, Jason, you could move on to the next screen. This is the dedication page or a screenshot of the dedication page. And um, what you'll notice, the banner across the top, that's just one of the just uh, the much loved um, templates that I use, but it fits really nice, obviously, with our kind of starlight walk theme. So it was perfect. And you can see some of the pictures um, that people posted from the evening. Um, some people posted on the night. We found that quite a lot of people posted after the event as well and um, because after the event obviously we did our social media posts and we did an email thanking people and encouraging them to share photos and shared the link again there with people uh, but it was just a really nice way to capture the evening and again um, it could be something we can use to promote the event for the future um, and it's just a really simple way of doing it it was a no ask um, uh, dedication we didn't donations on it and um, so it was just everybody was free to do that if they felt comfortable yeah thank you uh, yeah next slide please Jason thank you um so sort of in terms of how many people have attending and that kind of thing um I should have mentioned at the start but we um priced it at 20 pounds per adult and 12 pounds per child we um similar to how Katie did hers we suggested to raise 50 pounds um in sponsorship per sort of person we found that a lot of people did it as like a family um, which actually meant that people raised sort of more money because it, lots came in from different places so that worked really well uh, we had the biggest turnout we've had in a very long time um, so we had 400 people attend on the night um, and even considering that it was raining we had about 30 people sign up on the night um, which was amazing um, considering the weather um, 
So, and in comparison, last year, we only had about 150 people. So, um, yeah, it, people really enjoyed it this year. I think people are enjoying being back um, sort of doing things in mass participation ways again. I don't think the nerves in terms of COVID are there as much anymore, in our experience anyway. Um, so some of the other successes, we had great internal feedback. Um, clinical teams really loved being involved. Uh, they say they want to do it again and again, um, and they liked seeing people that they'd previously helped and cared for, and then it helped that internal relationship between fundraising and clinical teams as well. Like that was probably one of the biggest benefits yeah, from previous absolutely. years. They understood the event, they saw it in person, and it worked really well. Um, so this number, the number we raised has actually gone up quite a lot. So we have ra it raised £40,000 um, in total now. Uh, so the rough breakdown of that is 25,000 of that was from sponsorship. Um, so obviously a lot of that we had in after. Um, so we asked people to sort of set up just given pages. Um, and then so we had a lot of that after um, through that campaign. Uh, we sold about just over 7,000 in tickets. Um, so yeah, so that game was, most of it was raised from the sponsorship side. Uh, we also had sort of um, corporate sponsorship uh, stall donations so the people on the stalls um, donated a portion of their profits like the food stalls uh, we had uh, like a tombola there with just like little prizes and stuff so that raised a fair amount when we were there and then obviously just sort of general donations associated with the event from people there that donated whilst they were there as well um, so the event cost around £15,000 so the net raise was about 25 um, grand which it was amazing actually because we run events mass participation events obviously with the aim of making money but also as a way to get lots of engagement so to have done both um is it, yeah was really great actually it was a massive success for us um so in terms of in memory as well it really helped us sort of promote our sort of in memory ask that we're doing at the moment of our memory tree um, it was obviously the perfect um, audience for that so that worked really well we got lots of engagement um Lots of people interested in the memory tree. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and from my perspective, obviously, as the in memory fundraising assistant, I think it's helped to strengthen those supporter relationships and build on those. Um, so, what I did is, I for those people I've invited or had relationships that have kind of that have developed since um, sort of time to remember our little remembrance series, I've emailed those and said, thank you so much for participating. It was lovely to chat to you. I attached photographs that were taken during the evening that I spotted them on. And um, I shared their kind of totals and thanked them for that and like the impact that it was having here at the hospice. And um, for anybody who had a tribute page that they've created on Much Loved, I obviously added any of their offline, um, any of their sponsorship as an offline donation and referenced that. I had encouraged people along the way as well if they got just giving pages to link those up or actually link those up to their much love pages for them to help them and then they could really see their totals growing and they're saying oh it's great we've got to five thousand pounds now we want to do the next thing so that was really nice and um, and just you know one of the ways that we kind of tried to promote the event was a local newspaper ran an article on it and so I was able to approach a family who were doing it like it was um, a daughter and daughter-in-laws group and I approached them saying, would you mind speaking to the newspaper to help us promote the event? And that was great because I'd already built those relationships, but it helped the wider community see the, the impact the hospice has on real people and what the event kind of stands for as well. Um, and lots of engagement online. And I've had lots of like lovely thank yous back saying how the event was quite special. They really liked some of the little touches and the ways that they could see the clinical teams there or you know the bereavement team as well. So yeah, it was really lovely. Um, yes, yeah, so I think that's um, everything uh, from us. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah, that, <clears throat> thank you so much. That was really amazing. We have got lots of little questions for you. I don't know, Jason, if you can um, group them, if you think mm -hmm. lots about the breakdown of your costs, um, Amy and Beth. Um, yeah, so... <sighs> It was our event team that did all the very logistical things, but I think just from um, hearing the conversations, I think the biggest cost was obviously the lighting. We put a lot of money into the sort of lighting show that you saw. Um, the Cape Sloan Hall, um, which is where we have it, we've done it for many years there. So I think I think they charged 
£2,000 for the area um, and then we obviously had like um, the event village people we use a company that set up all the um, uh, it's called Niche the company um, and they set up all the uh, gazebos. gazebos yeah and the tables and all that and the screens and all that kind of thing if you were really interested in a proper breakdown of the cost I can put you in touch with our events manager who will be able to sort of run through those individual breakdowns but as a whole I think the biggest costs were lighting and um the sort of events set up for the event village we had a marshals but they they were all volunteers like around the route we had volunteer car park marshals um obviously we had staff help as well so we didn't so um we used lots of volunteers um, I think we had about 100 volunteers yeah. on the night sort of help us so in terms of that side that was quite cost efficient but yeah I think the physical setup and put down was probably one of our biggest costs. Brilliant yeah did you have any health and safety issues it's a question in from Anita um, especially organising a walk in a dimly lit area or I don't think no. so. Obviously, our event manager did lots of the risk assessments and all those fun things. Um, and we had St. John's Ambulance there. Um, we saw, oh, we paid for that, actually. Yeah, we get um, St. John's Ambulance there. Um, but no, it is, bits were quite dimly lit, but um, that's why we had, so it was a two and a half kilometre loop. And I think we had maybe 10 or 12 marshal points. Yeah, so it was like 15. 15, yeah. yeah. So as you can imagine, there's basically someone on every corner. Um, so, and there's quite a lot of people walking, quite a small, like, so no one was sort of walking through completely on their own through the woods. They, were, they could always see a marshal point. And then how we did the lighting as well, sort of um, lit up quite a lot of the way. So as far as I'm aware, we didn't have any sort of health and safety issues. People were aware um, with it being the sort of starlight walk and start time that you're gonna end up doing it in the night. And people weren't sort of on their own at all, really, because it was quite a small um, loop. So yeah. yeah, and I think because it's it's a designated path, you know, yeah. it was quite clearly marked as round as well with the signs and things like. And those little lanterns, I know they drop them off, but they could carry them round for a little bit to create some light as well. But yeah. no, there was no issues in terms of um, health and safety. Luckily, yeah. Because I cut short the uh, the lovely GDPR question. Uh, so <laughs> I'm just reading it out. Uh, from a GDPR perspective, how did you post to GIM donors? From the last five years if they aren't supporters on the database? So uh, we wrote to people with the legitimate interest uh, umbrella but if we had people's opt-in and all the email, email details we did do that first because obviously that's cost saving uh, for us but then we did go to the five, the five years with the legitimate interest. Thank you. And, I, and le they... I left that to my comms team, if I'm totally honest. <laughs> that's what I know we did. <laughs> and I, I think, uh, Amy Bingham, you asked a similar question on GDPR. I think that might answer your question. Yeah. And that was quite a smaller segment of people. And because it was a personally addressed one as well, um, it was people I'd already met and had conversations with. So it felt like I could make that kind of reach out and it had their names and like all their details you know like those kind of relationships were already in there so I think that was yeah. one way we did it yeah. for us yeah and that then, was a quite a small segment for that reason yeah and then we follow the exact same as Katie yeah. when we do our sort of like um life mailings we yeah. follow GDPR legitimate interest so yeah yeah, yeah. and there's another in fact there's quite a few questions on here and uh, this would be a good opportunity for us to plug <clears throat> Our follow-up event a week today at 11 a.m. and in the chat, I'm going to drop the uh, the registration link. So uh, this time next week will be an informal chat. So hopefully some of these questions we can uh, they can be opened out to other charities as well. But that's me in some ways uh, trying to escape some of the other questions. Are there any questions, folks, that you have seen that look like good ones? There's an interesting one, Jason. Um, did you find that most people use Just Giving for their sponsorship, or did they set up tribute, or did they add the event to their Just uh, to their Much Love pages? Yeah. So how it's always run is our events manager creates um, a campaign on Just Giving, um, where basic where they sort of then set up their Just Giving pages through that. Um, but we had people that did it obviously with Much Love pages. Um, and did it through their much love pay. So we, we well, you Amy, yeah. either added um, it on for them or asked them to add it on or added the donations on after. So we were very keen to link it all together. 
um, so that people can see that adding to their total. So then hopefully it encourages them to do it next year because if they're close to the sort of another sort of target, they can go to the next one. So um, mainly on just giving in terms of the sponsorship, but we try to incorporate them as much as much as possible. We really pushed much love. That was part of our, you know, when we're saying we suggest hundred pounds uh, sponsorship and we suggest you set up a tribute fund via much loved so you can remember your loved one and obviously sold all the benefits of it we did a really good job for you guys <laughs> um, and we set up steps to remember as an event in there so it could be rather than just general it went to the event in the tribute platform oh, excellent excellent um well as everyone can see the the in memory events are fantastic for building relationships both with your supporters but also internally which is great um and i think we've had lots of questions but as jason said we'll all be meeting um in a week's time and hope to see all our partners there so we can discuss this further and a huge thank you to beth and amy and to katie um lots of fabulous ideas which i'm sure everyone will be thinking about and um wishing you all a lovely day Thank you. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks Thank everyone. You so thanks, much, thanks everyone. Bye. 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 Ta da.